What's up Flick Connection, this is Darren and today we're going to talk about the Cloverfield Paradox and whether or not it just ruined the Cloverfield universe. So if you're like me, you watched the Super Bowl this weekend and you saw the trailer for the Cloverfield Paradox, which was a big surprise to just see all of a sudden, and then the ad ends with only on Netflix very soon only to find out that they were releasing it immediately after the game. So big news, I mean, it was incredible what Netflix was doing. It was a very interesting marketing strategy and it was unlike anything we'd seen before. So I was super excited to watch this movie and... Man, what a letdown. It was, it was a bummer, man. So we're gonna unpack it talk about why it was a bummer and what it means for the future of Cloverfield movies because we already have another one announced and we potentially have one every year as long as they do better than this one did. So major spoilers coming up ahead if you haven't seen the movie. Uh, watch it or don't. Um, I don't really recommend this movie, but if you did see it, let me know in the comments what you thought. Let me know if you think I'm completely off base. So based on what we saw, this movie's not even really connected to the Cloverfield universe. Now, some of you are going to want to point out some things. Don't worry, I'm getting ready to point all the ways it was connected out. Not only is there only a few of them, they're pretty thin. So let's go through those, because to me, this almost feels like a completely separate movie, like a bad space movie that the studio didn't know what to do with, that they unloaded on Netflix, that Netflix then said, hey, JJ, can we just tack on a couple of extra things to make this a Cloverfield movie? They easily could have done that. Based on the production schedule and announcements and things like that, I don't think that's the case, but that's sure what it feels like. So let's talk about some of those things. The glaring one for me is all the scenes with the husband. They're really the only thing kind of tying us back to Earth, uh, which is fine, but the production value on them looks horrible. They look like they were just sort of thrown together. To me, these look like reshoots that were added on to uh, make this tie in to Cloverfield more. So even if this was really a Cloverfield movie all along, these really do look like reshoots that needed to anchor it and make it work better. The, the production design is horrible. He's mostly just in his car, which by the way, he is texting like a m in this movie. He's watching, go back and watch the scenes where he's in the car with the kid. He's literally reading text messages and they show his eyeballs and he never looks at the road. And this only takes place 10 years in the future and I know self-driving cars are, are coming but he's driving this car so shame on him, don't text and drive. But the, the, the bomb shelter they go into is like sparsely designed as far as just like texture and, and, and uh, grittiness. It looks like a cheap set for like a, a sitcom. I don't understand really what's going on there. So if you were to erase all of those scenes, uh, that immediately removes a lot of the Cloverfield tie-ins. And to me, the movie could have easily done just as fine without them. Every time they tested, they risk ripping open the membrane of space-time, smashing together multiple dimensions, shattering reality, and not just on that station, everywhere. This experiment could unleash chaos. The clip of the scientist, uh, that looks like it was potentially added on. Even if it wasn't, it easily could have been. It's just sort of thrown in there to sort of like explain the movie, which is just weak, weak writing. You shouldn't have to do that. If you've got a better script and a better story, you don't have to just squeeze in this clip at the beginning that essentially explains what's getting ready to happen. And then to cap it off, it takes place 10 years in the future, whereas 10 Cloverfield Lane is present day, or at least 2015. Uh, and the reporter or, or newswoman in that clip, in that news clip, is the same actress who was banging to get into the bomb shelter in 10 Cloverfield Lane. And I know you can say, well, there's multiple parallel whatever. Uh, someone still would have aged 10 years and it's just this is where it starts to fall apart This is where it starts to get thin It's essentially the point of this movie was just to establish a scenario where like anything crazy can happen Which is just it's just weak weak writing 
And then we got a couple of little Easter eggs, which Abrams is famous for and everything that he produces. So there is a Slusho brand bobblehead on the ship. We just get a close up of that with no context, no actors in it. Easily could have been added on. And Slusho, it was featured in Alias. It was featured in uh, uh, Cloverfield. It was where one of the characters was actually going to work for this corporation. There, there's a deep, deep level, you know, stuff associated with this with the Cloverfield ARG which stands for alternate reality game which essentially is this deep online trail of Easter eggs and videos and cell phone videos and stuff that all give you little keys and clues as to this bigger universe and what's kind of going on with Cloverfield and this aside from a couple little Easter eggs this movie doesn't really expand on any of them uh, except for a couple we're going to go over with right now. Tagru Tagruato, Tagruato, I don't know if I'm saying that right, is a Japanese company, a fake Japanese company that's sort of featured in the background of Abrams movies, including and in, in most notably Cloverfield, and it's in all of the uh, ARG stuff as well. Uh, and they're potentially the company that has like unearthed the monster, at least that's what it looked like it was leading to. There's a little power box on the wall. Uh, in one scene and it just shows that name on the power box Easily could have been added in post well after they shot. I don't understand why that's the clue It's not even the logo, which is normally what's featured. It's just the name and then the way the movie ends it, with essentially a space pod falling I don't know potentially into the ocean. We didn't see but uh, at the end of the original Cloverfield movie, there's actually a little clip of the two main characters on a Ferris wheel. It's just like a cell phone video. And that video ends with uh, the main character turning it out to the ocean. And then just in the last second, you actually see like a dot just fall into the ocean with a little splash. And since that came out, since that original movie aired in theaters, People have been speculating over what that is. Most people determined that it was maybe a satellite or supposed to be a satellite uh, that's been mentioned other times. Possibly it's this pod, but I, that, that's basically it. That's basically as much as this ties together. And then it's just sort of this like weird space movie that was kind of had an interesting idea with like the space station just becoming lost in space like that moment was like oh man like where are they going to go with this not only does it just squander that opportunity and just sort of waste the the, the time with weird stuff it basically locks us in a room a space station basically locks us in a space station with uninteresting shallow characters during the craziest apocalyptic scenario imaginable unfolding on the surface of earth we're missing all of the best stuff because we're trapped in the space station with these these morons i mean people want to see this crazy alien invasion that you set up and 10 Cloverfield Lane. I understand if the next movie doesn't really get us there. I understand if maybe you want to tease it out over three movies, that's fine. But that's what people want to see. Why lock us in this space station with these goofballs for 80 minutes on Netflix? It's such a waste. Netflix, I think, just did a really ballsy thing. I'm, I'm excited about what Netflix did, but to, to have this be the product that's delivered is just really disappointing. It would have been one of the most incredible movie moments of the year had they dropped the first trailer on the Super Bowl, the movie comes out an hour and a half later, people watch it, they love it, we're all online talking about how cool it was, how you can connect this and that and that. Instead we get this just thin, vague, it's not even like it's ambiguous. I'm fine with ambiguity. It's just vague for the sake of being vague. And, 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 then, the, and then they establish things at weird times. This movie is just so poorly directed. We see that, that, that uh, foam gun three times. They show it to us three times and two times they show uh, him stimulate it with some sort of electric pulse that makes it tighten up. They show us close-ups of this foam stuff and then the foam stuff basically just turns into like arms and comes out and grabs them. It makes no sense for what they were showing us up close. It's just 
so poorly written. It so reminds me of Lost, where they wrote themselves into stupid corners and then just sort of wrote themselves out of it. And it's just a huge letdown for fans. I know I'm let down by this movie. You've got to be let down by this movie. If somehow you liked it, let me know in the comments. I really want to hear from you. I'm going to read it. I'm going to respond to you. But thanks for watching, and you will see me next time.